Hi, my name is Sanad. I'm a software engineer in test at GitLab. In this video, I talk about orchestrated tests and uh, how to run them. This is uh, a first video in a two-part series where I will be talking about orchestrated tests. And uh, in the second video, I'm going to walk you through writing an actual orchestrated end-to-end -end test scenario. Uh, so let's get started. So I've made some assumptions over here uh, while recording this video, um, I am assuming that the viewers have some knowledge about the GitLab QA framework as I'm not going to talk about the basics. Also, um, I'm assuming that there's some understanding about how to write end-to-end -end tests. However, if you came here looking for that information, I have some links for you uh, for where to get started. Uh, this is the first link I have over here. And uh, there's also a link um, I've, I've put down for a step-by-step -step tutorial uh, for getting you up to speed with writing end-to-end -end tests. Now let's talk about what orchestration actually means. And I have a snapshot over here that I've taken from Google. Um, I like the second definition where it says that orchestration is coordination of elements of situation to produce, to produce a desired effect. Um, in context of end-to-end -end tests at GitLab, these elements are Docker containers that run different applications um, like say SAML, LDAP, or, or, or GitLab itself. Um, we, we have a way of representing these elements in a GitLab QA project and we represent them with, uh, with a component. We have a component class. Each component class represents these elements that talk to each other um, when when the tests are run. Um, so a component may or may not have an associated Docker container. Um, so for example, the staging component, it only runs a, a test against the staging environment. Uh, so it does, staging environment is a live environment, so we don't have to spin up uh, GitLab inside a container for for that, it does not require a container. However, um, any orchestrated tests, any components using orchestrated tests do spin up uh, one or the other Docker containers. I wanted to show some of the uh, existing components we have in GitLab QA project. If we go to lib, GitLab QA, uh, sorry, GitLab QA, and then the component directory, you'll see a bunch of components over here. Um, let's look at one of the simpler components, MailHog. This component is responsible for uh, pulling the MailHog service and uh, running it inside a Docker container. Uh, the most interesting method over here that I want to talk about is the instance method. What it does is it inside prepare, it pulls the Docker image and creates a network if it's not already created. Um, and then starts the Docker container. Right, there's also teardown over here, which uh, stops, the, stops the Docker container and removes it. Let's also look at the GitLab uh, GitLab component, and this, uh, as you, as you already have guessed, is responsible for uh, running the GitLab application inside the Docker container. Um, again, let's look at the instance method here. There's prepare, where uh, in this case we set up uh, disable animations by by setting a, an omnibus bus config. And it, then it pulls the GitLab uh, image that's provided for uh, with the tag, and also creates a network if it's not already created. Uh, reconfigures, waits for the instance to become up, and then then once uh, the instance is up, if you need to run any commands inside the Docker container, that's where this uh, this is. This happens over here. Um, again, there's a teardown where it would stop and then remove the container. Next, I wanted to talk about test scenario. Um, a test scenario in GitLab QA project is where the components come and work together. 
<clears throat> at a very minimum, a test scenario would have just the specs component. The specs component is actually responsible for running the test suite from the Git, from the QA directory in the GitLab project. Uh, you'd need to provide it with a target uh, environment where you want to run the run the tests, and it would it kick off the tests against that environment. And you would also need to provide it with, with with a test scenario that you need to run. There are basically three types of test scenarios. The most basic one would have just one component, uh, and that would be the uh, spec specs component. Uh, the next level is where we would have two components, and then we can also have three or more components. We'll be looking at an example for each of these three types of components next. So test instance any is our example of the most basic kind of a test scenario. Uh, it just has one component, that's the specs component. We need to provide it with a suite. In this case, we're providing it with test instance all. Uh, this is a test scenario that exists in the QA directory inside the GitLab, Q, uh, GitLab project. Uh, we also need to provide it with a release, which it will use to um, pull the appropriate QA image and then create a container from that QA image and run the test against the uh, address that we provide here. Uh, we can also provide our spec arguments. So this is an example of how the command would look like. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is that uh, here we are set, uh, providing it with EE release and this would be translated, this would be used to pull the GitLab nightly, nightly QA image. Next, let's talk about the architecture diagram. I pulled it from the documents in GitLab QA project. The, uh, the GitLab QA gem would spin up a container using the uh, QA image, and that container would in turn run the QA scenario that we provided it with against uh, the live GitLab instance. Again, we provided that GitLab instance in the command here. Let's talk about a test scenario with two components. An example of such, uh, a, such, a, such a test scenario is test instance image. It's made up of specs component and the GitLab component. And we need to provide it with a GitLab release. And based on that release, it will pull the GitLab image and the uh, GitLab QA image and create Docker containers out of those. I have a link over here with an example of where test instance image is running in, on CI. And if you look at the code, the GitLab component needs a release. Uh, volume and a network, and this network is shared with network and the release are shared with the specs component. We also need to provide the specs component with uh, with the suite. Again, uh, as previously discussed, the suite is basically a test scenario inside the QA directory in GitLab project. You would notice that in contrast to the test instance any component where we provided the address from the command line over here the address is provided from the from the gitlab component so this means that the, the gitlab component would spin up a docker container running gitlab inside it and the address would be used uh, for running the test against that against that instance inside the docker container uh, let's look at the architecture the gitlab qa gem would spin up two containers, one based on the GitLab QA image and the other uh, based on the GitLab image where the GitLab application would be running. The GitLab QA container would run the QA scenarios against the, the GitLab instance inside the GitLab container. For a test scenario example that has three components, we'd be looking at test integration SMTP. It's made, of, made up of three components the specs component, the GitLab component, and the mail hog. We need to provide it with a release, and it would use that release to um, pull the appropriate QA image, the GitLab image, and create container, uh, containers out of those. It will also be pulling the mail hog image. Let's look at the code. So here, inside perform, we are spinning up the GitLab Docker container, and then we are also spinning up the mailhawk container and, and with the specs component, 
we are running the tests against the GitLab component. Now, uh, a point to note here is that we are setting certain omnibus configuration for a GitLab container. And this is one of the reasons why we have orchestrated tests. It allows us to spin up GitLab with certain instance level settings that we cannot change when we, when we are running tests against a live environment such as staging. So we are doing that right here. And uh, I'll, I'll show you another example later on where we change the uh, omnibus settings. But, but the point I wanted to make here is that this is why orchestrated tests could not be run against uh, live environments. Another thing to note here is the spec suite. We have it specified as test integration SMTP as opposed to test instance all uh, in, our, in all of our previous examples. So this means that the tests would call test integration SMTP test scenario or, or, or the suite inside of the QA directory in the GitLab code base. The architecture here for a test scenario with three components is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, I'll skip going through it. When to write orchestrated tests? Uh, whenever we need instance level settings, such as in this example I have here, uh, where, where I am passing omnibus config for setting up GitHub OmniAuth, we would need orchestration. Also, when we need to test integration with external services such as MailHog, LDAP, SAML, or Elasticsearch, or when, whenever you need multiple instances of GitLab such as Geo, you know that you have you'd be writing orchestrated tests. I also wanted to mention that whenever we add the orchestrated tag in tests, it's just a way to tell our spec that uh, you need to filter those tests out when running against live environments such as staging canary or production. Um, and the reason behind that is that we cannot run orchestrated tests against those environments, against live environments. All right, let's run a test scenario with three components. Um, so this this is an orchestrated test scenario. I'll copy the command here and run it on my terminal. You can see that it's trying to pull the mail hog uh, image, but since I already had that on my local, it started it up in a container. And then uh, the next thing it did was it tried to pull the GitLab nightly image. I also had that on my local, so uh, it just started the container again. We're now waiting for GitLab to become available. We're now running the tests. This is actually um, executed by these spec component. And there you go. Test passed. And we are tearing down the all the containers. If you look at the docker run command that was executed by the spec component, you would notice that we are passing um, a test scenario onto the uh, GitLab QA image as well as uh, a target a GitLab instance run the test against. Uh, let's first look at the Docker file that was used to create this, um, this image, this Q GitLab QA image. Uh, that file is in QA directory. So we are, we are in uh, the GitLab project. You go into the QA directory and there's a Docker file here. The thing that I want to point out here is the entry point. If you notice that it has been test. So this Docker file bundles the entire QA directory into the image. And uh, then the entry point, pro point provided is bin test. Like, let's look at bin test inside QA directory. There you go. So what bin test does is that it executes the uh, 
the QA script and passes all the arguments to it. What does the QA script do? It uses the first argument passed to it, converts it into a constant and calls it on the QA scenario module. Uh, what was the first argument that was passed here? It was the test scenario, test integration SMTP. Let's look at where that test scenario is. It should be under QA, QA, scenario, test, integration, SMTP. And uh, what we see here is that the test integration SMTP scenario is actually a uh, test instance all scenario except that it is passing a tag, the SMTP tag here. So that would mean it would just run all the tests that has the SMTP meta on them. Let's search for it. So uh, there's just one test that has the SMTP meta and that is the exact test that we ran right here. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to walk through the steps of writing into an orchestrated test. Take care.